Hey, young black man. God wants you to be free. So that's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Ed Lee, and I have a street ministry called Hey, Young Black Men, a street ministry, and its focus is on black on black violence of our young black men and boys. And God is using it to use his word to combat black on black gun violence. So again, God wants you to be free. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what it means to be taken captive, what it means to be a, be a captive, um, what it means to be free slash to have freedom. And we're going to talk about that in this first part. It's going to be broken down maybe into like six parts. And I'm going to just do a few minutes, stop, do another part so I can post it like that on TikTok. And so there we go. So let's start. So what does it mean to be taken captive? That It means taken or held prisoner it means kept within bounds being confined it also means held under control of another but having the appearance of independence now this definition reminds me of the tactics of satan he makes people feel as though they are living their best life all the while they are bound being satan's puppet being manipulated by him and to be taken captive also means imprisoned or confined. Now, what does it mean to be a captive? Uh, a, cap a captive is one who has been captured, one captivated, dominated, or controlled. Hmm, that's something Satan does. Uh, it means to be a captive means a prisoner, and it also means a person who is enslaved or dominated. Now, what does it mean to be free and to have freedom? Free means release from bondage, not occupied or in use, available. Now, I declare you will not be occupied by demonic spirits. Satan will not have you bound in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. God has released you from this bondage and all bondage of Satan. You are now available to be freely used by God in Jesus name. So I want you to hold on to that word, okay? Now, freedom means the state of being free or at liberty. Hey, I'm with it. Uh freedom means exemption from external control. And when I wrote that out, I got Satan and his minions are external control. And why do I say this? And it's a court in accordance to God brought uh first Peter chapter five, verse eight. And it, in the Amplified Bible, it reads, be sober, well balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Um, freedom also means the absence of or release from ties. And when I wrote that out, I got reminded of soul ties release. So freedom release from soul ties. So God restores our soul, restores our soul from whatever or whoever it is attached to. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3, A. And I say A because that's the first part of that verse. It reads, he restores my soul and he is God. So restores mean to return, turn back, come or go back. And soul means life, person, mind, living being, desire, emotion, passion. So God will return to you, your life, your soul, your being. God will return to you your mind. God will return to you your desire. God will return to you your emotion. God will return to you your passion, your soul, your being, your mind, your desire, your emotion, your passion can be gone from you because it is attached to something ungodly. It can be a person, place, or a thing. So remember, God can and he will, if you allow him to, restore your soul. Now, this is freedom. So 
again, back to the definition of freedom. It's also the state of being without something unpleasant or bad. It is also ease or frankness of manner. So an example is you are living your life in complete freedom from the bondage of Satan. So that's an example of ease. You know, that's a good ease right there. Be living your life free from bondage, the bondage of Satan. So I declare this over your life in Jesus name. Okay. Now, um, how can you not be a captive? How can you be free? I simply ask God. When writing this out, I just ask God. I was like, okay, God, how to be free? What to say? I don't know. And immediately I heard James chapter 4, verse 7. And when I read it, God had me to read all the way to verse 10. So let me read those verses to you. I got them in the New King James message and amplified and the TP version. So um, I like to read the different versions. So before I Paul I in um, part one, I'm gonna read these to you. Prayerfully, I can get them all out. So James chapter four. Verse 7 through 10 in the New King James reads, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Now, James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10 in the Message Bible reads, So let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. Say a quiet yes to God, and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out the funny games are over get serious really serious get down on your knees before the master it's the only way you'll get on your feet now in the amplified version james chapter 4 verse 7 through 10 reads so submit to the authority of god resist the devil stand firm against him and he will flee from you Come close to God with a contrite heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. Be miserable and grieve and weep over your sin. Let your foolish laughter be turned to mourning and your reckless joy to gloom. Humble yourselves with an attitude of repentance and insignificance. In the presence of the Lord, he will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will give you purpose. And lastly, James chapter 4, verse 7 through 10 in the TPT, that is the Passion Translation. It reads, so then surrender to God, stand up to the devil and resist him and he will flee in agony. Move your heart closer and closer to God and he will come even closer to you. But make sure you cleanse your life, you sinners, and keep your heart pure and stop doubting. Feed the pain of your sin. Be sorrowful and, I'm sorry, feel the pain of your sin. Be sorrowful and weep. Let your joking around be turned into mourning and your joy into deep humiliation. Be willing to be made low before the Lord and he will exalt you. So that is.